So some of you who come to the live stream regularly may recall that a few weeks ago, we shared the very first version of Maestro, and we shared some of what we were working on with Inside Stacks. Last week, we showed off some crawling. Last week, two weeks ago, we showed off some crawling. We are about to open source Maestro, and I wanted to show off I wanted to show off the where we are with crawling as well, which is pretty cool. So I will go ahead and uh, walk us through this real quick. So first of all, let's start up Maestro. And for those of you who weren't there last time, Maestro <laughs> is our um, Maestro is our uh, our AI management runtime engine, and this is going to be a big part of how we're actually running and managing uh, inside stacks. It's not going to be exactly the same version we're open sourcing because this is much more terminal oriented. So to begin with, it's going to make sure I have Claude and Docker. By the way, this can work with other uh, AI agents as well. I just like cloud code. So that's what this is set up with. And I'm actually, I, I'm, I, I was literally, I literally just reset this so I could walk through the onboarding again, because I'd like to kind of show everybody how this works. So we're going to go ahead and it's going to say, hey, welcome to Maestro. I want to be able to let the code run. I want it to do a PR, a, a pull review uh, while I'm doing code in another folder. I want to be able to have two agents trying the same version of a feature or thinking about it or something like that. But the problem is when they run in the same code space, they conflict. Sometimes I want to just let it run for a while. But I want to do that without having to constantly stop and answer prompt questions, but also making sure that it doesn't completely trash my working folder, making sure that it doesn't do what I accidentally let it do when I manually authenticated a command and had it accidentally copy a bunch of stuff into the wrong folder, which took me two hours to clean up. This runs in an entirely sandboxed container. So it only has the code that you're working on in there and it runs locally. This is all running on my Mac right now. Um, I like to be able to just open up my editor and make changes as well. I still write a lot of code by hand. I find that in fact, that's the best way to specify what you want the AI to do. So we, uh, you get started, uh, you authenticate. I'm not gonna show you all of that because that's already done. There's been a lot of articles written about how AI agents can be tricked into exfiltrating data. Well. This has a very, very advanced firewall that actually looks at domain names that are being accessed and stuff. And so we only allow through the ones that we really want. And then of course you can decide how much memory and CPUs each, uh, each runtime gets. With that, you're ready to go. And it loads up all of your open containers. So you guys will see when this finishes loading in a moment that I have quite a few different, uh, different things uh, running right now. Sometimes the tokens expire so you can just go through and hit some buttons to do that. It's a nice, beautiful UI. I'm very proud Love of it. this. Uh, this, by the way, is what happens. This is why I'm not allowed to design the main apps because this kind of terminal interface with uh, Retro's 90s colors is what happens when I'm allowed. No, it's awesome. UIs. Honestly, it's awesome. I think it looks really cool. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little cool. Like uh, it's a, it's a little cool, right? No, no, no. So I just like, like a magician who's about to start a good trick. I just pulled up my sleeves I, a little bit. And for folks who are not developers, what you're seeing, what we're, what we're showing you guys right now is our, this was our internal tool for us to move faster on very complicated, large scale mobile uh, software projects and how you use AI better. And so mm -hmm. you, and so how do you use, how do, how does everyone on the team, safely have multiple agents, as many as you want, working as you are the maestro of your agent orchestra mm -hmm. and be able to work with you that without breaking without breaking everything. But work on the same code at the same time, which yeah. if you have multiple agents running in the same folder at the same time, they're stepping all over each other and they'll make a right. huge mess. Or you'll be in the middle of editing some file, just sort of fat, dumb and happy, so to speak. And then all of a sudden an agent will come through and make edits underneath you. And now you have conflicts to resolve. It takes a long time. By the way, of course, for those of you who want to automate this, every single command that's in the TUI is available as a direct command line invocation. But I wanted to show off something about crawling. So you guys may recall that last week we showed off, by the way, when you hit one of these, you just enter the container and then I can drop down to a shell. So last week we showed crawling raw HTML pages and it was pretty fast. And I saw this cool article um, and you guys will see from the URL that it is a CNN article about how vibe coding was announced as the word of the year. You will be able to simply request meaningful structured data out of this instead of raw HTML. I got 10,000 tokens from CNN, which is about 10,000 words. And we are now going to use uh, an AI agent that we have been doing a ton of work on this to, this is pretty fast, yeah. automatically extract this article. So this article is that Vibe Coding was named the Collins Dictionary's Word of the Year. This is an extremely well-formatted, 
true and faithful to the text of the original article version of the actual article. And uh, by the way, if anybody's interested, you could Google this, look on CNN. So this is, this didn't just crawl this from the web, right? And actually load the real news article right now. This extracted only the useful, meaningful data out of it. Um, and that is a huge, huge difference. This is one of the key pieces for how we go from not just having the engine that can crawl the websites and not just having the engine that can be the stack engine, but this is the middle layer. We, when we some time ago showed off the knowledge abstraction layer and the idea that there were three parts, there was the, the acquisition, there was the organization, and in the middle, you have the transformation. And this yep. is the transformation. This is taking that data and doing something useful with it. Within a matter of a couple of seconds, we were able to crawl a website from a real mobile device somewhere in the world and then pass that through an AI pipeline. This is the final piece of the puzzle that ties this all together to the insight stacks. We have the, we have the acquisition, the transformation, and then the organization. Yeah, and, you know, and the future of um, insight stacks, you know, it's, it's going to be multimodal. We're going to take the same kind of mindset in thinking about, okay, if someone asks for uh, clips of video or, or podcast transcripts or text, you still want to do that the most efficiently way possible. And then you can combine that into a better insights. But also, you just we have the constraints of mobile. This is in our DNA. We've been doing it for so long. So we knew this is very important that we can't, we can't just scrape a bunch of pages. Like you said, if you get too much stuff that's like in ads and all that stuff, it will actually confuse the AI and the output won't be that great. That's why we call it deep in precision. And you have to have exactly what the customer asked for and then what the AI can get. Crawl a lot of content. And so you need to be able to just get exactly, extract exactly what you need for that, for that prompt, the inside stack that prompted it. Um, so this is very, very yep. important. When you, you know, we're talking about like vibe coding, but you actually, if you really want to, um, take advantage of AI tools as a, any startup. You really have to build some of the infrastructure now. Everyone assumes these things are just available, like everyone's using multiple agents to like code faster. That's actually not true. You're using your, your uh, cursor, your terminal. People don't spend the time to actually sit down and uh, build up their setup in this new AI world. I go back to it and use it even when I'm only running a single agent in a particular folder at a time. And the reason I do is because it's so useful and I have on a couple of occasions, uh, we, have a, we have a little orchestrator that we'll be adding the Maestro eventually that can automatically do this. But on many occasions, I'll be like, eh, I don't know. I, I feel like it might not get it right the first time. So we just start a couple more and then we have one more container that just uh, manages those other three. Oh, but to just end this, I'm just going to show this oh, animation nice. off one more time because I think it's so cool. It's like boop, 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 boop. Yeah, boop. that is really cool. I just Honestly, I wish there was a way of like I wish there was a way of doing like the Tron open yeah. music like it remind, uh -huh. me, like, remind oh. me of like original Tron. How much are you now not, not actually browsing anymore, but you're just um, asking AI, then watching, reading, listening to the response, and then interacting. So it, it, this is very quickly replacing browsers. A um, lot of the a lot of the big companies and the brands. Um, a lot of the companies who do search engine optimization, they're already reporting like traffic is down on search pages 20, 30%. They ask AI to browse for you. So you assume the AI can actually crawl the internet like your personal database. Like I said, today you can't or it doesn't provide the tools to like be really efficient on exactly what you get. So an insight stack has to be kind of three things. One is like when you ask a deep question that you want to have a, that's an important question because you want to make a big decision. That crawl job that the AI is doing when it's crawling maybe 500 or 1,000 sites, is it including YouTube videos? Is it including podcasts? Is it including the right sites? You want to know that it actually knows how to do that properly because you won't trust the output if you don't know if that, that, uh, the crawl job is you know, deep enough and complete enough to actually provide good answers. Second part is like a good prompt. Today, we can provide all those, all those instructions of here's all the tool set of what, you, what is possible of how you can extract really great insights from the internet. And we can democratize that for anybody. And then the third actually obviously is the output. So we want to provide a really efficient output so that you can get a summary of that output. But that output of files, like Chris just said, is not a bunch of crap that you don't need. It needs to be very efficient. Here's exactly what you need because we're building this insight stack, not just for you to be able to read it, summarize it. That insight stack is actually built for AI so that you can drop that link into any LLM or any agent or lovable, wherever you prefer. And that is it's gonna be highly structured and clean, uh, cleanly extracted data so that 
the output that you get, the summaries, the charts, the web apps that can be created from this insight stack is just even better, so, which means that the final form needs to be in a, in a version that treats AI as like a first class citizen of the internet. And then if you can do that, then you create a pretty great new primitive of intelligence capsules on the internet. So like insight stacks are like the, um, you know, kind of a living knowledge capsule of the internet, taking the chaos of the web, extracting it down to something that can be remixable, shareable, built for AI, so that it can do a better job of answering great questions for humans and leading yeah. to more desirable outcomes. So better decision-making, a lot of people will prefer, like I'd rather have my LLM or AI agent actually connected to the UpRock community because I know it's mm -hmm. going to scrape the network. Honestly, and I know people are actually all helping. Actually, it's better. You, you just feel better too because as you're doing it, it's the world's knowledge. The world can participate and actually benefit too. Is when you when you go out and crawl jobs, people are actually earning tokens as well. This is so, like performance enhancing code. Yeah, that's a totally different mindset. So like AI agencies always need a little bit of context, and so I think brings more attention to UpRock projects as well. And so excited for both reasons. And by the way, I don't know if I don't know if this is not clear enough, but what Chris is also showing with the terminal doing that one crawl job, this is how we do it internally for when we are building the product. Um, but the final, so Maestro in the final form is ready to share. But the final form of Inside Stacks, just to be clear, people are not going to going to be on the web. Yeah, it's going to be on the web. You're not going to have to use a terminal to actually do this. We want to democratize it for anybody, any professional, any consumer. So it will be accessible for anybody. It'll be a web app. Uh, and that's what we're building now. But under the hood is what you're, Chris is showing you today. This is how yeah. it's working under the hood. You don't need to worry about how to grind and extract information mm -hmm. and do it efficiently. We're doing all that work for you guys. And the UpRock community is actually, actually mm -hmm. is a network that enables, unblocks the internet for everybody. So it's going to be a shareable as a link. And some are going to be great at creating apps and websites and dashboards like Lovable. Replete can also make full-on prototypes and apps. All those companies uh, make it really difficult to actually hydrate it with real fresh time, real-time data. We're providing that part. Drop a link into any of those tools, and you can have amazing real-time data dashboard that answers a specific question you want. AI is an awesome remix machine, so it needs to be designed so that any part of the stack can be changed without having to recrawl or change everything at once because that's highly inefficient. So we can we have the tool set for anybody can create really cool insight stacks to do stuff like just give me a, um, a daily summary of the exact kitchen tools I want to buy and give me some price alerts, you know, yeah. or, or travel or what have you. So that's where you go. Uh, GitHub.com forward slash uprock.com. We will be up there shortly or uh, pretty soon. Just give us a follow and also share it around. We want to see what uh, people make with this. Oh,